hill. Um, and it, it essentially goes back and connects to a bunch of protected open space. The, right, we have uh, 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 wilderness here, we have uh, 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 forest lands, all kinds of uh, cool stuff. Um, and so uh, this is a, a, a nice piece. It's also this whole watershed. So the, the, essentially the entirety of the watershed is in this, um, this protected area. Um, normally that's great, and, and that is great. That, that is a great thing. Um, unfortunately in 2020, uh, this big fire came through. We've been hearing about all these big fires, right? Uh, management issues here. Um, one, we'll walk down to the beach real quick and just take a quick look. But uh, so we have, let's go over here and take a look at this. We will hear more about this later today. Um, but uh, just to start with, so we're here, right, right here. And so here's here's the big reserve behind us. So um, now we've not talked about MPAs and stuff like that in, in class. We'll talk about that starting next week. But um, uh, we have. Uh, a series of marine protected areas off off of here, right? So there's different categories. We have some that are, you know, right here, it's SMR, State Marine Reserve. Uh, nothing, can't take anything. We call that a no-take, meaning nobody can take anything. So if you and I want to take something, we have to get a scientific collecting permit and, and, and have a good reason to do that. Other air, we have, there's three broad categories, but this other one that's just, um, just uh, a little bit north of us is um, a state marine conservation area and so for most things you can't take in there however there are allows uh, allowances so in this case in this one here you can take salmon recreational and commercially you can take uh, albacore a tuna um there's something else what else can you take oh spot frog spot frog but but everything else can't, right now now that that doesn't mean you, you can't go there you can kayak through you can scuba through you can swim through it um, you just can't you just can't harvest um, things of that nature so uh, so the general idea here is uh, with, with marine protected areas is to set aside some areas that we don't we don't nuke that allows populations to get bigger have more eggs have more babies all this kind of stuff and then augment the area outside the protected area with those babies and, and stuff, right? So then you can fish and harvest, do whatever outside, but it's essentially a spatial refuge, a spatial uh, protection of, of exploitation. Okay, the, the last big thing to talk about in terms of management here, oh, sorry, two more, two more. One, as I mentioned last night, um, most of this is, is, is now, you know, public lands, University of California system, state, state land. Um, but there are some inholdings. So when this when this property was acquired, um, the original folks that families that had I think there's three homes um, here. Uh, two of those three homes burned in the fire. Uh, one has been rebuilt already. So there's there's, there's um, at least two of the three that I know of are, are are functioning home houses. And so these are folks that you know families have had these parcels for a long time, and so they'll come here, so they access and they go through her up to their. Um, to their, uh, their, their, their land holdings. Um, uh, yeah, so then the, the, the last one to mention is uh, invasive controls. We've been, we've been looking at pompous grass along PCH. We've been driving around and doing all that cool stuff. And that was, and that's, that's good. I want to talk about that more. But, but um, here the big story was for many years uh, Phytophthora remora. So the um, um, sudden oak death. So do you guys remember sudden oak death at all? Yeah. Okay, so so what do you guys remember about it? It was like a fungus or something. Or? Yeah, it's it's not a fungus, but a but a a, a, a funky a funky uh, 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 protist. Um, but uh, uh, but basically, yeah. So we started noticing. Folks started noticing in the '90s um, in Marin County. Um, all of a sudden, a lot of oak. I think originally it was tan oak species started just like looking like they're dead, and then it started to spread, and so it spread and it hit other oak species and it started to spread around. And so people didn't know what was going on, but it looked very clearly like an infection. And so you know, this is a great place. We're here. We, you guys, we we were in Piedras Blancas. Got in the car, drove, stopped at an overlook got back in the car, drove, got here, right? So back in those, the, the olden days when this was really isolated, it would take a long time to go from here to 
the on array, right? Now we're in the car, heater, air conditioning, tunes, right? It's all good. Um, and, and all of our stuff is being tracked with us, right? So the soil that we step on, especially in our shoes that have a lot of good grooves, that, that little mud or soil piece is there. And then we walk and we sometimes step and a little bit falls off, right? So um, early on in the infection, we didn't know what was causing it. We weren't sure what was going on. But then it became clear areas where people went to recreate a lot, hiking trails, biking trails, that kind of stuff. Uh, we had a lot of the, the uh, disease. Um, and the disease essentially kills the oak trees, basically makes them kind of um, kind of like, uh, almost like they're, they're experiencing drought and they die fairly quickly. And there was huge worry, right? That, oh my God, we're gonna lose all of our oaks. And so um, the reason, one of the reasons that, for example, Rancho Marino was like, use our firewood, don't bring any firewood. Why these guys? There's firewood here, don't bring firewood. It's because of worries of importing um, nuisance species, problematic species, um, and when this when this photophora, when, when the disease was affecting the sudden oak death uh, or causing the sudden oak death, people were freaked out. And here in particular, they were really freaked out because it was not here for a while. And people were like, "No, no, no, you can't come. You gotta disinfect your tires with bleach. You gotta like clean your shoes and all that kind of stuff." And um, and so. Essentially, we still have sudden oak death. It's still impacting oaks, but it's it's sort of um, it hasn't died down. But it essentially, got all the sensitive individuals, or many of the sensitive individuals now. It's still burning through the population. But just like the pandemic, the first wave is like wow, it takes everybody out and everybody's sensitive, and then people get a little bit of resistance, um, or or the individuals die, and the only uh, and the only um, acorns or whoever that survive are the ones that are a bit more resistant to it. And so, uh, you know, huge impact on our oaks, but but it hasn't eliminated oaks in California. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, as we're seeing with the diseases uh, with, that we mentioned before, with the um, echinoderm, uh, sea star wasting disease and the echinoderm diseases, this is becoming more of a thing, right? So human tra air travel and things like that really help spread, um, make it easier to spread um, diseases very quickly, not just for people, but for critters and, and plants and things. Um, and, and this is a, a huge issue. So vector control is always a thing. So these guys, the California Conservation Corps that are here doing trail work, every time before they work on a trail, they're gonna disinfect their equipment. Because they don't wanna be chopping chopping a, a, a tree in one site and then get some, I don't know, some some disease from the sap or something on the, on the blade and then come to this other site and, and contaminate it. Um, it's a great idea when you travel around to clean your shoes. Right, so certainly whenever I go to a far distance away, like we were talking about Turkey last night, some of my stuff in Turkey, absolutely. Before I would go to Turkey, all my shoes would, would get cleaned, like hardcore cleaned and then bleached. And then on the way back home, I would I'd also buy a little bottle of bleach. And the last day I was in Turkey, I would, I would, I would bleach all the bottom of my shoes and stuff. Um, so, so vector control is a real thing, right? But it's also, how do you manage that, right? I mean, maybe you can manage us here, visitors to the reserve, but there on PCH, are we going to manage all those cars? Like no way, right? So there's, there's only there's, there's only so much we can do. Um, but but where we can do it, especially in things like this, ecological reserves, where we're doing monitoring, it's particularly.